Microsoft loves Linux. Red Hat has you covered in more ways than one. This guy right there, if you can see him, he's going to review a KDE Slim book. And Firefox go, Firefox? No, Firefox, Firefox goes quantum. It's quantum, man. You, you can't deal with that kind of stuff. It messes your brain up. It's a great day for Linux, though. See, now you're messing me up. It's a great day for Linux, everyone. <laughs> Let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we take that midweek break to talk about some of the cool things we found going on in Penguin Land. I'm Ben Stone, joined every week. You know him, you love him, tolerate him. Um, that is one yes. Pedro Mateus <laughs> with his super fancy four for one pound. What is that stuff called again? Um, engine. Engine. <laughs> It's not called Injinx. It's just engine. no, no, no. Although, if we are to apply the same rules of pronunciation that uh, Nginx uh, subscribes to, then it would be Engine. Engine. <laughs> that, that, that sounds truly horrifying. But you say it tastes pretty good, right? Yeah, it actually doesn't taste half bad uh, for four cans, uh, like Red Bull sized cans, for a pound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really taste bad at all. It's a less sweet version of Red Bull with uh, a bit less CO2 than um, the one that Coke makes uh, burn, that they call it. Yeah, that's an interesting yeah. name for product. But do you know something that has left a nasty taste in a lot of people's mouths this week? Uh, uh Atlas? <laughs> I was thinking about this Microsoft and Canonical. Oh, um, yeah, that was that. Yeah, these, these guys hook it up, man, because this is uh, definitely happened, because we all know uh, step one is uh, embrace. And um, what happened? Microsoft and Canonical increased velocity with Azure, tailored Linux, Kernel. Yeah. This is the thing, man. Any Ubuntu 16.04 LTS image uh, brought up on Azure after September 21st will be running the Azure tailored Ubuntu kernel. But fear not, there is an 18% reduction in size. NAPI received segment co-scaling. Um, latest Hyper-V device drivers, so a little bit uh, speed there. I guess... The, mm. It's uh, Microsoft making their Nginx GUI slightly less crap. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I wasn't joking. Oh, well, all right. Maybe maybe I was half joking when I said... <laughs> Just a little bit. St step one's embrace. Ex well, extend. Is it extend, embrace, extinguish? I forget yep. exactly how that goes because my second thought was, you know where this ends up, right? You, oh, yeah. If you're looking down down the road in the future with Canonical going for an IPO and all that, and you're like, no, I don't, know where it I don't know where it ends up, Vin, to which I would retort, oh, yes, you do. You just don't want to admit it to yourself. And um got to say, I'm a little worried about that. But um, it's a good thing. It's good to see, you know, the, everyone working together. But I don't think, maybe I speak for just myself when I say this, is no one trusts Microsoft. No, but, yeah, no. That's just, that should be common sense for most of you listening at this point. So, yeah. <laughs> that's definitely a thing wasn't it Balmer that called um, what did he call Linux cancer or uh, no he called open he source said it, it was open source was a cancer uh, Linux was a communist operating system mm -hmm. I don't remember <laughs> that second part but yeah that was definitely a thing I wish him all the best of luck maybe, maybe this helps out with integration maybe we'll see a uh, <laughs> Windows on Wayland I don't know man the times they are changing. Hmm? Yeah, Will and on Windows, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, <God>. Well, <laughs> speaking of things to put on other things, Red Hat. Uh, they um, they're offering some courses for free, and this is nothing new. Uh, if you've ever gone to edx.org, chances are you've seen a number of free courses. Every now and again, quite a few of which uh, tend to be offered by. Red Hat themselves, and this time around, they are um, just offering like the fundamentals of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Uh, they offer the basic system administration and hands-on training with RHL 7. So it's actually not 
a terrible way to say transition uh, if you're looking to get the Red Hat certified engineer or the Red Hat certified um, system administrator certifications. If you are looking to get either of those, these courses are actually a pretty awesome stepping stone for you. No, I definitely think it's a good thing. They do point out that no previous Linux experience is required and it's free uh, by people you know, probably, and people you can trust to at least give you a fair shakedown. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, being at X, uh, maybe it's a good way to get, kind of get your toe working a little wet. Like, mm, maybe it's this Linux thing for me. And it's a good mm-hmm. idea to have Linux certs. And I, I genuinely thought about, you know, um, it just made me wonder just how badly I would butcher not if, but how badly I would butcher um, getting an RHC in 2017. Uh, hey, the basics are still very much the same. You don't have yum, you have DNF. Uh, and the rest shouldn't be all that different. I, I don't know. You <laughs> Unless see, they it, changed. It, it's frightening enough to where I didn't even look into it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they probably changed something else in the background, but yeah, no, off the top of my head, I can't really think of anything that's scary. Hmm. Though, uh, something that is scary is when, say, you're trying to develop a piece of software and you always have that threat constantly looming over your head. It's like, am I about to infringe on someone's patent? Even though software patents are a hot topic, but they exist. Uh, there are quite a few of them. And Red Hat, uh, for themselves, have like 2,000 of them. 2000. Yeah. Uh, so, and they say they will not enforce their patents so long as even if your software, like, makes use of a part of something that they hold the patent for, they will not enforce it if you uh, license your software accordingly. So, basically, what Red Hat is saying is do your homework when it comes to licensing your software which you should already be doing from the start if mm-hmm. you want to actually have a piece of software out there. And we will not go after you for um, using technically patented bits uh, that are theirs, I guess. Well, I mean, when you say that, this is nothing new for anybody who's been following this for any amount of time because in 2002, thereabouts, they first uh, did this, you know, made this announcement with all of their patent sauce. And... of everything they have in their portfolio should be covered by this promise. And keep Mm -hmm. in mind, they could always come back and bite you on this. Um, Does not, for the most part, cover any of the hardware patents. So um, we should point out that your project does need to fall under one of the listed uh, licenses, be it OSI or the Free Software Foundation. Those are linked. This Basically, will be in the show notes, like everything else. You can go and check. Any of that. Yeah. Um, somebody did bring up, I posted this on Google+. Plus. That's a, still a thing, but if anybody asks you, tell them it's ghost town. We don't want those people there. <laughs> um, they, they said it, it is kind of worrying that they have 2,000 patents. Someone has to have them. Well, would I, you rather Microsoft have them? Would you rather Oracle have them? <laughs> or Oracle, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe Oracle will buy Red Hat just so they can try to sue Google again. I don't know. Um, that's definitely. Thing. Oh, they would have plenty of ammunition then. Oh, they, they probably would. A terrifying amount. I, uh, I think that's good. That's neat. Good on them for doing that, and you know, it makes your life a little bit easier, especially if you're going to be building a product and kind of doing the Red Hat model as a selling service. Mm-hmm. You know, so good. Good on them for doing that. You put something about this wacky little distribution that I completely forgot about in the show notes. Why did you do it? <laughs> well, uh, they have, they made an announcement on Google plus go figure, uh, that, uh, the new version, which is based on Fedora 26 is now available. This is Corora. I used this distro, uh, after Fuduntu died and I jumped around distros for a bit and I ended up on Corora because, Hey, this is Fedora based. So it's something I know how to do. Something I've already uh, done a great deal with. I'm just looking so, under web zone. What's up with the spacing? It seems a little bit off, maybe. Uh, it's it seems to be justified text 
on that bit. <laughs> not being that but, guy, yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, they have version 26. They always take a little bit of time when Fedora releases a new version. They take eh, a little bit of time to make sure everything is working properly. Then they release their version of the, uh, the OS. And this version comes with the, like, the different desktop uh, ISOs that you can download. Cinnamon 3.4, GNOME uh, 3.24, KDE Plasma 5.10, uh, Mate 1.18, XFCE 4.12, and... Just a basically the exact same level of updated software you could expect from a new Fedora release. It's mm-hmm. just a couple of months late, but that only means that it's going to be a lot more stable on the ground, so to speak. How big's the team working on this? Uh, honestly, I don't know right now. It used to be just like seven or eight people. Okay. Uh, one of the UI designers, uh, was, uh, also one of the UI designers, uh, on Fuduntu back mm. in the day. Uh, he, when Fuduntu died, he found Corora and was like, oh yeah, that's again, something I already know. So he started helping them. It's but kind of interesting big- when you guys were working with distributions like that. I've never considered Fedora hard, but, you know, I do enjoy petting coiled rattlesnakes. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but now Fedora is quite easy to use. One, one thing I noticed about the, that they're getting rid of their, well, they're dropping 32-bit support. And, oh, yes. Which I was, I was thinking, hmm, I was reading through the notes. It's like, yeah, but who does that affect? Uh, who actually still has the 32-bit, the heck, Pedro? Um, what are you doing with 32-bit box, man? It, 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 it's a ThinkPad. A what, what, <laughs> what, what events had transpired in your life that went so horribly wrong that you have a 32-bit system in 2017? I was doing the uh, decommissioning roundup for the uh, for the workplace because apparently it's a thing. People who go into the position I went into, it's one of the first things they do. They go down into the basement, round up all the old hardware, Take note of it all, of all of the asset numbers, everything, mm-hmm. and then say, okay, these are to be decommissioned. And I found one uh, laptop that didn't have an asset number. So I went around asking, uh, were like T42s a thing? And it's like, yeah, but that was a long, long time ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so can you check this one to see if this one is in the system? Oh, no, that's uh, that was the old regional director's. He threw it down there. It was his personal computer for us to get rid of it. So can I keep it? I don't know. Ask him. So I shot him an email. And he said, oh, yeah, that's that's fine. Hmm. So I have it now. <laughs> Nothing like no longer on the books hardware I learned in uh, my previous jobs. Uh, this does include Canvas, which is their attempt um, to kind of replicate an open SUSE build service. I think, yes. they, I think they made an XKCD comment. Uh, about <laughs> that um and as you pointed out uh, obs the open build software is a little too mainstream mm-hmm. as you pointed out i mean it ships with xfc 412 so it's got a proper desktop manager and since they're dropping 32-bit we probably should mention that um the Ubuntu's they're dropping 32-bit builds of 1710 for the desktop entirely it's not going to be a thing yeah it's not. It's not even going to be on the eighteen oh four LTS. Mm-hmm. Could have waited until then. Mm. <laughs> I, I mean, it's just if you were waiting for that, I'm sure somebody's going to come along and. I still have. I that's what I'm currently running on the ThinkPad is uh, seventeen ten beta one. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was kind of hoping that they would at least release eighteen oh four like the last LTS with thirty two bit. Maybe they will. Yeah. Makes sense. You know, Ended on an LTS. So let's see, what do we have coming up next? Um, up next, well, we're uh, we're still on releases. Apparently, this is PTV, which should have totally been a slice of pie, but hey, it's mostly software. So um, uh, this, what is exactly PTV? Because I've been hearing this name for a long, long time, and I never really used it. It's a video editor, man. I'm on your video editing. Oh, all right. Yeah, and <laughs> this is not point nine nine Ocean Big Chair, mini bug fixes, performance improvements, and it's the release candidate for one point not. Um, they got a bunch of new stuff in the test suite, and yeah, you can install it right away because it's a flat pack. They're doing that. 
which is questionable because we all know snaps are the future, right? Um, <laughs> and they're on the road to 1.9. I just wanted to throw that in there because, you know, we need more video editors. And a lot of people don't even know this exists, uh, as Pedro kind of pointed out. Yeah. Because <laughs> as he was going to try to install it on his Raspberry Pi, he's like, this is not a very good experience. <laughs> Probably not. Well, with that name, PTV, yeah, this is Pi. <laughs> It's definitely a thing. Um, let's see. Was there anything I wanted to say about that? Uh, uh, the lack of a changelog, which I am very uh, inclined to agree. They did have a link to their fabricator. I had to mm -hmm. look through it. It's like, oh, there's a bunch of stuff in the backlog, some stuff that they're working on. And there's a like a table off to the side saying named done, but it's empty. So it looks like they haven't done anything. <laughs> I think one of the biggest things I, I just want to say um, as an ironically said pro tip, guys, when, when you're doing a, a release bit on your, on your web zone, include some information like a change log because yeah, other than installing it, I don't know. And um, that might incentivize more people to actually go check it out. And oh, uh, look, new things, things I can try. Things exactly. I can try. So um, you... I poked Looked the thing. thing. Yeah, <laughs> I poked the thing, and uh, I, I again, I will ap apologize profusely because that video was not good. I know that, and I am sorry. I was very disappointed with that laptop, and I know this sounds like an excuse, but it's the only reason I have. I was genuinely disappointed with the slim book. It's a very good looking, very sturdy feeling, very. MacBook looking um, Linux laptop. And I wanted to like it. That's exactly the kind of laptop I want. But for some reason, someone decided to make a terrible, terrible keyboard to put on that laptop. See on the top right there uh, where you'd expect the delete button to be? That's the power button. Yeah. Tr imagine touch typing on a laptop that has the power button where the delete should be. You're going to, even without what, without meaning to, hit that power button repeatedly. You will loathe when the KDE uh, logout uh, overlay thing appears on screen because you were just trying to delete something that you typed ahead of where the cursor was. It's annoying. Annoying. Now let's pretend everyone else lives in the actual world where they care about how it performs, not a damn keyboard. Right. Uh, performance was uh, uh, the uh, it's a, a 6600U processor. Uh, so yeah, it's an ultra low voltage, and it performs in between an i3 4005U and uh, an i5 uh, 7300HQ which the 7300HQ was on the Kratos, and if you were just buying that laptop that laptop CPU for some reason to replace, a broken one, for instance, uh, it would cost you, like the i5 would cost you around 250, while the i7 would cost you around 400 bucks. And the i5 handily beats it, and it doesn't really use that much power because there's still a laptop, that much more power because there's still a laptop CPUs. So it's, I don't know, I guess Intel went without competition for a little too long, so they can justify pricing a dual-core i7 that performs worse than an i5 true quad-core, much higher. That's no. But mm. uh, another thing that disappointed me, the battery life, not good. I was expecting, okay, so it's got a 53 watt-hour battery. That's big, 6,800 uh, milliamps. 7.8 volt discharge. That's a nice battery. So let's put it to the test, put it to some actual use. Three times I compare that uh, that battery in like regular productive use, mostly while I was typing down the review and doing all the graphs and uh, listening to some music, some, watching some YouTube videos. Never got more than like six hours and a half out of it. And the average between the three uh, tests that I did was like six hours, 12 minutes. That's not, that's not good. What did you like about it? I liked 
how thin it is, how light it is, and how sturdy it feels. When you pick it up, you can wave it around. It feels sturdy, really, really sturdy. It's basically like a Linux-powered MacBook. And they um, they hid they did the uh, the MacBook thing where they hid the um, the exhaust vents and the intake vents in the screen hinge. Oh, you mean because the speed I, holes? Yeah, <laughs> because I was. As I was doing the tests, I could hear. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the, it was kind of brilliant because he was like, this thing has got a fan in it, but it's trapped inside. There's no way. Yeah, it was right. because I could hear a fan. It's like, where the hell is the air coming in from and out of? It's like, what? It's like, looked at the hinge. Oh, clever. <laughs> uh, apparently, that's not a new thing. I just, I've never had one of the newer, slimmer uh, MacBooks, so I didn't know that they did that, but they do. Uh, and yes, Strider, I reduced the brightness while testing the battery. The, uh, the settings, I used the exact same settings on the Slimbook that I used on the Introware Kratos. It's the exact same ones. Sure, the type of things I was doing was different because they, it, they would inev- inevitably have to be. You never do the exact same work every single day. So, but... The tests were very much similar as to the best of my ability. I replicated the, all the conditions as best I could with different hardware. Don't worry, and Pedro. Any type of benchmark, there's always going to be that one person and Strider's going to cut in line. A <laughs> um, <laughs> couple of things with this. Uh, how much did this thing cost again? Uh, let's see. The model that they sent me as configured was 1,249 euros or 1,100 pounds mm-hmm. or 1,800 dollars Canadian. <laughs> So eighteen hundred dollars Canadian. How does that work out? It uh, no, it's not good value. It's better than if you were say buying a MacBook with an i seven. That's mm, maybe that's because, not even questionable. Uh, at that price, uh, it's almost borderline. Why don't you just buy a low end MacBook and put Linux on it? <laughs> um, yeah, but then you'd be getting an i three. Uh, but yeah, uh, no, it's uh, compared to the MacBook, it's a better value proposition. Yes, but the battery life is not good. The it, it's not terrible by any means. You still get over six hours of battery uh, doing regular productivity things. And if you just leave it idle, yeah, you get like 12 hours of battery while it's just there at 20 or 30 uh, percent screen brightness. No uh, keyboard backlighting, anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not. It. I really wanted it to be a good laptop because I've. I'd read other reviews. I'd seen other videos of people actually playing with the slim book and saying, oh, yeah, it's uh, even though it's it is pricey, if the performance and everything else justified it. Sure, I'd be OK with promoting a laptop that says, yeah, we give part of our revenue to the KDE developers. They do. Uh, if you buy a KDE slim book, part of that revenue goes back to KDE. That's really neat. But it's very hard to justify eleven hundred pounds for something that performs worse, much worse than, well, the other laptop I'm currently reviewing, but that is coming soon. Well, that's Stick the great thing. I'm glad, I'm glad you were able to get your hand on it because yeah. uh, there's a lot of people, I'm not throwing at anybody, but I've seen not necessarily just reviewers. It's the whole thing of if it has a penguin sticker on it, you, you just blindly up, yes. <laughs> blindly heap praise upon it no matter the flaws that it genuinely might have and if you say anything negative it's like well there's some genuine flaws here and you immediately the, these same people will screech at you that you're hurting the Linux community by pointing out uh, things that need to be improved that never made sense to me and um, as we were saying in the pre-shows and I'll probably release the 10 minute video <laughs> I apologize for our Patreons in advance. For Patreons, <laughs> just just so you can watch what I had to cut down to five. It's kind of brilliant. Before we get out of here, um, what do we? We got two more things we that need our attention. Oops. Up first, uh, Firefox, man. This just kind of dropped yesterday, man. They are talking mm-hmm. about. It's really Firefox fifty-seven, but like this thing's so awesome, it's going to melt your face off so hard. <laughs> That we're going to call it Firefox Quantum because we need brand confusion. Wait, they probably didn't want to do that. Um, anyway, <laughs> no, <laughs> they did. Uh, this is legit. I've downloaded. I've been playing with this for the past, you know, not quite twenty four hours. But I mean, this thing is so fast. You almost, almost 
almost feel like you're actually running Chromium. Um, <laughs> there is a mention in the release here about, they got a nice little video here. Uh, it wins some and lose some against Chrome, but uh, they do mention on Windows at least better high DPI support, but they don't mention anything about better high DPI support on Linux. Checked it out. That's because there is none. So don't get your hopes up for that. Just your standard old things. If you have a high DPI monitor, they'll apply. And um, it's pretty good. Still no love for Google Hangouts. I kind of wish they, uh, Google and Firefox, you guys need to go uh, make out and get that sorted and make up or whatever you want to do. You can download this right now and have a go with it. It is a thing. And uh, I like it. I like progress. I like competition. And um, yeah, it, it, uh, if we're being honest at this point, Firefox really needs that speed boost. They really need a win. Uh, because I remember back in the day being a part of the nightlies mailing list and downloading the nightlies, playing around with them, submitting bug reports and thinking to myself, wow, this nightly is really fast. It's really awesome. And when those series of nightlies that were really fast and really awesome actually made it into a full version, they were slow. They were mm. very, very slow, very bloated. Used up tons of RAM just to get... Well, that's one of the things they said they were working on with this release is finding the right balance between memory usage and speed. Yeah. So, and this looks good. And they do have their new, um, what do they call the new look? Oh. Uh, uh, photon. Yes. The <laughs> Photon design, uh, it, it looks all right. It has the, you know, do the screenshots in there reasonably laid out I, it's me i don't care about design sorry um as <laughs> long as i have an address bar it works i say good yeah, an work. address bar that lets you do some search with whatever is your default search engine that's mm. all it needs to do mm. <laughs> very happy with this so um good work on the mozilla team for that uh before we completely get out of here um, oh yes you were playing around with our web zone weren't you <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, we use Cloudflare. Mm -hmm. And this kind of came up. I, I, I was neck deep in breaking things before this came up. So that that's just as an aside. But Cloudflare, man, uh, good guys. Uh, they've kind of said, hey, DDoS attack, DDoS attacks no more because we're introducing DDoS be gone. They didn't call it that. You should call it that. I'll license that to you for a low price. This is even available for the free plan. We don't have some YOLO plan. I think we give them like 20 bucks a month. Um, it's pretty neat. I mean, you are not going to get noped out of orbit from your standard DDoS attacks anymore. And it's wicked easy to set up on anything. You got to ch change two name servers and you should be up and running. I just wanted to give them a mention for doing that because I love it when things like this actually happen. And the guy's mm -hmm. like, hey... I'm tired of sites getting DDoS because they're and saying something that other people disagree with, and it doesn't matter because this happens. I'm not even talking politics here. Oh, the, no, this has been happening over uh, YouTube vloggers. Oh, dude, no, it, it happened to uh, <laughs> uh, Krebs, Krebs and Security. Yes. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, just having this built in to make this a non viable attack and. Yeah, it's brilliant. And it's uh, nowadays with the Internet of Things and uh, having your fridge and your washer connected to the Internet and with the crappy security that they come preloaded with and most people don't really care. So they don't change the default passwords. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't even come with passwords. So they're just open to the Internet. So a lot of those are just bots in a botnet uh, that end up getting used by script kitties to launch a DDoS attack of 1.1 oh, terabytes per second of data just smacking on a server. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a thing, man. Um, good on them. If you have Cloudflare enabled, you already have it enabled. It's a thing. Yep. I think it's got on by default now. So I say good on them. I like seeing stuff like... Um, Let's encrypt rolling things out. Anything that kind of shakes up the market because, you know, that's a big business that Cloudflare just kind of walked in. So everybody come get some. And yeah. that's good on them. Uh, but 
what we really like everyone to come get some of is Patreon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Think about it. No commercials. We're doing that. It's kind of brilliant. You can support us and you can get cool stuff in return. You know, we, we like to kind of give back. I think we have something. What do we have? 240 posts just for the party patrons. We've got reward tiers. Get your name in the credits. You can get early access to content, early access to show notes. Man, some people just think Chicago kicks ours. You, you can, oh, yes. you, you can <laughs> prove that. And among other things, limited, <laughs> but not also including, actually totally including, if I can get it to switch over. There it is. That's our Discord. Oy. Do you see that? We have a live audio stream just for our patrons and um, some other content that's going to be rolling down there. It's a kind of a place where you can come check us out the other six days of the week. That's where the miscreants like to party when we're not mm-hmm. in IRC during the live show. I want to thank everyone supporting this business. Thank you so much. It's kind of brilliant. Um, oh, yeah. We... Pff- we're not good at plugging. Uh, <laughs> we scheme. still have the... Well, it's Amazon pretty bad when like I have it queued up, Pedro. Versions. I got the page queued up. I'm like, oh, oh, right, 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 right. We can do this part too. <laughs> Amazon affiliate links. They're a thing. They're awesome. You people are just murderating them. Thank oh, you yeah. so much. You don't have to do anything but just click on the flag button of wherever you might be. Buy <laughs> things. Amazon gives us a little cut. We got a wish list. We got some stuff on there. Um, just for the studio. Uh we're going to be moving some hardware around across country soon. So yeah, if there's anything on there, be like, Hey, I want these Yahoo's. Oh, I think, uh, Frank, are you around? No, Frank's Frank's at choir practice. Yeah. Today is Wednesday. It's choir practice. Uh, we, we do have a lovely shot of him. Um, Oh, <laughs> uh, he looks way too happy. I still think he looks way too happy at that he, picture. Uh, man, he's <laughs> grinning. He's grinning. I, I don't know what you really don't. Honestly, I do know, but I'm not going to tell you what it was about, but he's got his <laughs> own little fine upstanding cannibal wool for anybody who picks us up something on the, um, Amazon wish list. And he's, he's around Saturdays. If you want to come see him live, but that's brilliant. Uh, PayPal buttons and magic internet but- monies because I've been told that's oh, yeah. it's uh, those bitcoins completely worthless now so good moment yeah nowadays it's kind of pointless so if you have a few laying around throw them our way <laughs> and, and if you fall for that <laughs> give us all of them uh, LGC cares no okay <laughs> time Ooh, for a that's slice that's actually a really good looking pie I don't know I was kind of impressed by this one because they took the time to yeah they actually put the pie well, well no look around <laughs> the pie they, they have the 3.1492 and you know you can't just go buy pre-made numbers of dough which I'm sure somebody will send us some feedback next week going here's where you buy pre-made <laughs> numbers of dough it's kind of a thing okay what do we have here laser cookies what is it Pedro I've never heard of it well, this is a, a teeny tiny project that uh, Stephanie, she, she's she been doing a lot of projects with the Raspberry Pi for a while. Uh, if you check out her YouTube channel, you'll be able to see all of them. Uh, she's also on Twitter. And now she decided to make a laser grid safety thing for her cookie jar. That's <laughs> not a euphemism for anything. Don't go there. Uh, it's literally just a PVC tube case around a an actual glass cookie jar, which then she wired up some laser beams. Freaking laser beams. <laughs> and whenever lack some, of sharks. Yeah, whenever someone crosses one of the laser beams, like say you reach your hand in to get one of the cookies, um, it takes a picture. There's a camera mounted on the top and it takes a picture of the culprit. So, yeah, no, I saw that. It's like, oh, is that that terrible movie with the uh, entrapment that it was called? It's like the DIY entrapment prop. Oh, man, department. was that the one with uh, Sean Connery? And, um, yes. Yeah. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure this uh, little and prop. Everyone remembers that movie for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. yeah. It won't help you get either Sean Connery or Catherine Zeta-Jones into your place. Sorry. <laughs> I think that's kind of neat. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I would probably put something a lot more stabby than a camera up there with a um, pneumatic actuator. Um, <laughs> like, tink. Right. You're like, Ben, what's the point? It destroyed the cookie jar, too. It was like, yeah, but they got to learn. You know, it, it's the same thing. <laughs> that as person learned. The same reason, you know, you draw the bunny rabbit ears over the power outlets. You know, it's... Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, nail gun. I'm totally with Arthur on that one. Nail gun. <laughs> nail gun. Uh, or <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I am not adult. I I don't like sweets. We all know that. But even if I did, I, I'm nowhere near adult enough to own a thing like a cookie. Do people own cookie charts nowadays? I guess. I haven't seen a, one that's been used for cookies in a long, long time, but... Uh, it's like, oh, look, but then you have a sugar chart. Like, that's not sugar. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's flour. Yeah, it's flour. Hush, be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have a cookie jar, you could uh, let us know about it and what you keep in yours. Is it full of raspberry pies? And one simple way to do that is... By going over to the linksgamecast.com, you hit the contact button and you fill in the form. Just be sure to change the bit where it says uh, LGC Weekly. Change it to LWDW so you can send some feedback this way. Though, if you do want to send some hate mail to Linux Gamecast Weekly, you can do that too. It's easy enough. Just uh, try and beat the capture that day it's just some maths i know we promised there wouldn't be maths but we lied <laughs> i didn't say anything about that <laughs> well i lied <laughs> all right there we go coming up first uh this wall of text is brought to you by colin keenan oh yeah okay uh, so he's talking about the uh right last week we talked about the w3 cdrm bits and he says why find cdm is not available on linux and he posts a link uh, says it's available on Windows 7, 8, uh, OS X 10.6 or later, Intel only, which means, for example, YouTube TV cannot verify the DRM of the monitor attached to the computer. It still plays, but at a max of only 480p, because plugin management is no longer supported on Chrome. Widevine is now listed on the Components tab, and on Linux, you will see that it's not listed. Since YouTube TV requires Chrome, it does no good to try to wide find plugin in Firefox. Also, did you notice that Netflix, Amazon Prime, CBS, All Access, etc. don't actually show the resolution of your video playback? Are we getting the same quality playback as Windows 7 slash Mac OS X? Well, if they're using the H.265 hardware uh, decoder on the Skylakes or the Cabby Lakes uh, or your NVIDIA card, then yeah, you should be. I don't um, see why not. One thing I will go ahead and say, it doesn't matter if you're running Windows or Haiku or BOS. If you can watch your Netflix through a browser, I haven't checked this in a while. Look up like Netflix secret commands. There's a keyboard mm -hmm. shortcut that you can punch in and it'll tell you that on Linux, maybe they've changed it. It's been a long, long time since I've watched the Netflix on a like an actual monitor because yeah. it's on all my tablets and I got the Chromecast. And, uh, but no, if, if it was limited to 720p. So, yeah. And you notice things like that when you have, you know, 28 inch monitor and you full screen that. You're like, wow, that looks rough. That's when I started looking into it. Maybe things have gotten better. I don't know. Possibly they've gotten worse. Amazon, again, no, I, I have. I have never watched Amazon uh, Prime Video. Yeah, no, I've only, uh, Amazon, through. the Prime player, I've only ever seen it on a tablet. So, well, on the tablet, oh. you got to jump through like 19 hoops to get it on a tablet. Shame on yeah. you, Amazon. <laughs> Fix that. that. That is a P-I-T-A. But good feedback. Good feedback. What do we have up next? You see, so, this, this is next. what happens, Pedro, when we actually say, hey, send us some <laughs> feedback. It, it happens. Yeah. Uh, following on the uh, W3C uh, story, which was also about the fact that the EFF uh, left the W3C because they did not agree with the inclusion of DRM into the web standards. And mm. Matt wrote in, I could have sworn they were leaving because of the way they had the DRM stuff written in, made it so that the US courts could use the MCA to get any white hats that cracked it and disclosed it. EFF tried to appeal that part and they got outvoted. And that was the last straw. Could be wrong, though. Cheers. Uh, no, that's exactly what happened. That uh, they did not agree with the way that DRM was being introduced or mm -hmm. that it was being introduced at all. Uh, so they opposed it and a vote was called uh, on the appeal uh, for that opposition as to whether or not it was like the last gasp of whether or not the DRM could be left out of the web standards. They got outvoted it. Uh, it was a close vote. It was like 58 to 42 percent, something like that. So well, uh, that was just the whole last straw. I mean, it wasn't just one single thing that caused the I know that makes for a better story. It was like reason X was the reason EFF left. 
It's like mm-hmm. They wouldn't even negotiate. Nothing was up for negotiation on the table. They were like, we're putting this in, which is what I said last week. DRM was getting in. That that, uh, that was happening. That's the world we live in. I wholly don't support it. But it's one of those like, yeah, that, that's, that's going to happen. So mm, that's a thing. Last but not least, uh, we, we always enjoy um, when a member of the Asgard High Council um, takes time. Uh, currently on holiday with uh, Captain O'Neill, but uh, actually... Mm-hmm. Sent, sent us a message uh, kind of along the same lines uh, with the uh, yep. talking, uh, the Pulse audios. Um, it's Freya. I said, man, once again, because we were talking about Pipewire, right? Pulse yep. video. And he um, said, once again, the whole audio video stack gets yet another XKCD 927. That was the number I was trying to remember earlier this show. <laughs> uh, oh, how can you forget that? That's the standards one. Yeah, come on, man. This time, I'm getting old. It's video. The blog spot, blog post, Christian Taylor hedges a bit whether Pipewire is supposed to also replace Bolts Audio, but I get the feeling that he wants it to... Ev- oh, of course he does. Um, I, I guess this could be a good thing. Eventually, after the bugs, the headaches, and all the screaming is done, just like Wayland, uh, you could say just like Pulse Audio. Um, just like Pulse Audio, yeah. <laughs> I guess this is also supposed to solve the video capture and street w- that Wayland has. Yes, it hopefully will. Merry yeah, Christmas. That's- you filthy animals. And I don't know, man, does Home Alone one really still stand up? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, the special effects, they were all practical back in the day. So, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, that is still fine. It's just a story. Maybe it's because I've seen it every single Christmas because that's the Christmas movie for Portuguese TV. It's just... <laughs> Home Alone. Okay. Um, Home Alone and Home Alone 2. Uh, the third one they don't seem to like for some reason. But yeah, no. It's, uh, it's. I guess it's a movie you can watch, but I know the story reasonably well. It, there's just no. <laughs> so, no, man, I agree with you. It, Pulse Video could definitely become a thing. I kind of want it to become a thing because it's kind of hard to... They divvy out my little bits of aggression and hatred um likes and dislikes to a bunch of different projects. If we could just mm-hmm. get it all tightened into one thing, if we could have like one solidified thing that the rest of System the, D, that's my counter argument. Well, I was about to say if the rest of the industry can get behind it, then Kumbuntu can come out with their own version. <laughs> well, right now, uh I would say that yes, by all means replace G Streamer, but Leave Pulse Audio in, because Pulse Audio is kind is a of piece sort of, of nightmare work. fuel. As somebody who regularly works with it, that moving target of nope. Uh-uh. Yeah, anything to get rid of that. Yeah, just get rid of G-Streamer, get rid of both the audio and video syncs uh, and everything else that G-Streamer takes care of. But mm-hmm. leave Pulse Audio in as the actual uh, audio manager. Pulse Audio is a good piece of kit, and, you know, I know there's the one person, possibly three, out there screaming, make Jack the Ulsa default. Also was good! <laughs> hey, man, I, I stuck with Ulsa for a long time because Pulse was junk for a long yes, time. <laughs> and when I say junk, I mean when you're trying to use it to actually make stuff. Pulse was okay for playing your video games, listening to YouTube videos. I didn't say it had a problem and doing that. And even then... Well, Good even headache. then, that's where a lot of hate I got back. They're like, it works perfectly for me. And I'm like, you watch YouTube videos and that's it. So, yeah, I didn't say it couldn't make noise. Um, <laughs> it had a lot of other issues, which thankfully, for the most part, have been resolved. But I think that's going to resolve this episode of Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. It's been awesome. I want to thank everyone for showing up live. If you do want to come check this business out, we do it, what, 3 o'clock Eastern time. What time is that in Space Britannia? That's, uh, if you're in one of the GMT countries, that's 8, 8 p.m. 8 p.m.? Yeah. So that's kind of brilliant. That's noon uh, for the uh, U.S. West Coast. Mm, good times. Uh, and yeah. if you're watching the YouTube version, remember, there's the audio version available at LinuxGameCast.com. we got the RSS feed. You can put it in your podcatcher and all that. And if you're just listening to the audio and you want to see our ugly mugs... We got a thing there and come check us out Saturday where we do Linux weekly, not, no, not Linux weekly gaming daily. Jordan names these shows. Okay. Linux <laughs> Gamecast weekly 
We're going to be talking about the Atari box with its Linux goodness and um, AMD hardware and how that's going to work out. And oh, we're going to play some serious Sam, but not the one you think. Uh, that, that might throw you off just a bit. If you want to get in touch with me um, at Vinstone, search for Vinstone, you'll find me. I'm around. Uh, if you somehow find our Gmail address, good on good on you. Because I forget that we have <laughs> no it. No one sees it, but kudos. I'm just... Golf clap because I, it's really cute because that is not listed or tied to any of our accounts anywhere. And I remember to check it because it's not listed as a, it's just a name holder account, right? It's like I didn't want somebody else to get it. Yeah. And like three or four messages from different people, like, why haven't you gotten back to me? It's like, how did you even know this email exists? <laughs> You're not trying <laughs> to hide it. How did you find his email address? <laughs> right. And if you want to get a hold to, uh, you? How do they go about it? Yeah. Smoke uh, well, you can uh, do Alcohol. a Google search for me. Uh, if you look at the images, the, mine's the first one. It's my Twitter account. That's at unaccounted4. Uh, and the third link, or the fourth link, I know the, the third and fourth are me. One's my Twitter account, and the other one is my Google Plus profile. So, really, it's I'm on the first page now. That's kind of scary. Oh, all right. <laughs> um, I'm going to hit the credit button credit buttons Ooh. and let's see what happens oh, there's yeah. a yeah yeah, yeah. participation oh lovely people lovely people are giving us a lot of money our executive producers <laughs> it yeah. works until you start doing the math it's like man we're doing four shows a week oh yeah <laughs> there's plenty of linux gaming and casting happening during the week we're getting pretty I good the dying <laughs> light you need to come check us out on tuesdays oh yes We've, uh, which we've, that, uh, that game has no business being as fun as it is, but it's pretty fun. It's all right. We've achieved like mild competence at it, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs>